Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege that we have to be in your presence once again. We thank you for how your Holy Spirit moved this morning and challenged us. Lord, I pray that you'll teach us once again from your word tonight. Draw us closer to you. Make us more the people of God that you desire us to be in this service, we pray. We just thank you for all that you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh. 
that tonight, Jesus. We want to come, Lord, boldly to your throne of grace. Lord, we want to obtain mercy. We want to find grace to help us in our time of need. Lord, I just thank you that you see right where we're at, Jesus. Hallelujah. When we praise you in the midst of the storm, Lord, you show up. You calm the wind and the waves, and God, you bring us a rescue. You bring us the help that we need. We just thank you for that tonight. Hallelujah.
died and rose again. Sing that again, I'm forgiven.
on tonight. Thank you that you love us, love us perfectly, Lord Jesus. You give us everything that we need for life and godliness. Lord, you're our provider. You're our protector. You're that refuge that we can run to tonight. God, wrap us up in your arms tonight. God, let us know, Lord, that our footsteps are ordered by you. God, your Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, will show us truth. It will show us things to come. And help us just to rest in your presence. Rest in your all-sufficiency. Rest in your sovereignty tonight. Hallelujah. Accept our worship as a sweet sound in your ear, Lord Jesus. We pray it's blessed you. God, open up our hearts. God, so that we can receive what you want to speak to us tonight. We give you the remainder of the service. Teach us. Lord, draw us nearer to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Them. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. I want to share a message tonight entitled, Do Not Forget the Lord Your God. Do Not Forget the Lord Your God. Usually when we're going through crisis times, catastrophe, natural disasters, that's when we're crying out for the Lord, right? But when everything's going well, and it, there's not, the, the winds aren't, aren't contrary, the waves aren't crashing up against our boat, uh, it's smooth sailing and gentle breezes, like the fall can sometimes be in Colorado, it's nice to get some cool weather. Uh, but in those spiritual times, those spiritual seasons, sometimes it's easy for us to forget God and to think that we're in control, we take the driver's wheel, Say, God, I got this. Let me drive for a little while. And we usually make a mess out of it. And so I want us to see some things. The Lord was dealing with the children of Israel as they were getting ready to go into the promised land. Good days were ahead of them and that, that were promised to them. And there's good days ahead for us. Better days. God's promised us. But we need to make sure that we don't forget the Lord our God, that we keep our eyes on Him. There's a song by Kim Walker that's called, Where You Go, I'll Go. There's a line in that song it says, though the world sees and soon forgets, we will not forget who you are and what you've done for us. And uh, we need to remember that. That's a, a powerful line. And it actually comes straight out of a scripture in the Old Testament. Though the world sees, they've seen the evidence of God, some still choose to reject him. And I don't see how. Uh, we know from relationship uh, how awesome God is. Though they see and forget, we will not forget who Jesus is. Amen? What he did on the cross for us. We need to remember his agape love, his unconditional love, what he's done for us even after we're saved. Amen? Answers to prayer, healings, breakthroughs, working in our families, working on our job. God has been faithful to us. And we must not forget uh, who he is and what he's done for us. What are some memories today? that have made, so made their mark on you, that have so impacted your life that you'll never forget them. Maybe it's once in a lifetime events like your high school graduation. I graduated um, from Liberty High School here in town at the Air Force Academy, and that was a, a powerful time. Of course, back then, we didn't have quite so much uh, political correctness as we do now, but they were even back then, 1990, telling our valedictorian who was a Christian that he couldn't mention anything about God in his speech. But I thank God he did it anyway. <laughs> and they were telling us that we couldn't pick anything that was Christian as our song for our class, for our graduation. And even though I wasn't fond of the particular artist necessarily, but Michael W. Smith's song, Friends Are Friends Forever, was our class song. And so uh, I'm sure you have some memories as well of a high school graduation, things that you'll never forget. Maybe it's the tragic death of a loved one, meeting your husband or meeting your wife for that very first time, or getting saved, having God answer a prayer in some miraculous way for you. There's some moments in our life that just leave a mark on us, either for good or for bad, right? And that we'll never forget. And uh, Monica and I saw some things in Louisiana uh, this past week that left a mark on us. And uh, I'm, I'm so blessed and encouraged to see how God uh, used Monica. She was doing some things she's never done before <laughs> as far as work but also was able to see the Lord move in ways uh, that she'll never forget. But that left a mark on us. The devastation, the heartache, it's heart-wrenching. 
uh, to see people's loss and to try and find words to comfort them uh, when, when words really aren't enough. And uh, those things leave a mark on us, all their contents out on their front you know, lawn. Uh, it'll leave a mark on you. We need to f remember how blessed we are. Amen. Not forget the Lord our God. Even though we may not be those people who are going through devastation, but we need to not forget the Lord our God. God warned His people, the Israelites, before they went into the promised land that they needed to be careful to not forget about the Lord their God once they stepped into that place of blessing. Amen. We need to remember that. God is warning His people today in 2016 that we be careful when we step into His promises and blessings for our lives that we don't forget about the Lord our God as well. We need to remember Him. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. I want to look at verses uh, 6 through 11. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verses 6 through 11, it says this, Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in His ways and to fear Him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity and which, and in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Verse 11, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you this day. Then skip on down to verses 19 and 20. It says, Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods. We know Israel did that, right? We know America has done that. The God that we started with in this country is not the God we're following for the most part. If you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and serve and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. You're going to be in the process of dying. There's people in the process of of dying without Jesus in their life all around us because we're following other gods. Verse 20, As the nations which the Lord destroys before you, so you shall perish because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. We need to hear His voice in 2016. Amen? We need to be sitting under preachers who are hearing from the voice of the Lord and saying what thus saith the Lord. But we also, not just secondhand, need to hear from preachers. We need to position ourselves by faith at the foot of the cross and say, God, I've got to hear from you today in my Bible study, in my prayer time, in my fasting, in my praise time. If it's in the shower getting ready for work, God, I need to hear from you. If it's driving down the road and you're... Turn on a praise and worship CD and begin to just worship Him before your day gets in full swing. We need to hear the voice of the Lord and not forget that He is the source. Amen? He is the one who is directing our steps. So I want us to look at some things tonight. Number one, He tells us in Deuteronomy 8, do not forget the Lord's commandments. He talks about simple obedience. Verse 6, don't forget the Lord's commandments. There's simple obedience that's required if we're going to follow the Lord. Listen to this quote. Salvation has never been in commandments, in rules, laws, bylaws, stipulations, or works of any nature. Salvation is in a man, and that man is Christ Jesus. As we said this morning, the only way we can fulfill any commandment of God is in Jesus Christ. We need to be hidden in Him. We need to be completely enveloped with, with Jesus Christ, covered in His blood. Amen? knowing that it's His finished work, not our poor, pitiful efforts, not our trying harder that's going to cause us uh, to be a, a pleasing in the Lord's eyes, but it's being in Jesus so that when God the Father looks at my life, when He looks at your life, He doesn't see you and your striving and your poor efforts. He sees His Son. Amen? By faith. By our putting our faith in Jesus, He sees His Son. God gave mankind a code of law that would order his life and steps and demanded that he keep it. At the same time, he knew he wouldn't and in fact couldn't. So God would provide a substitute, the Lord Jesus Christ, who would keep, who would keep the law and thereby redeem all those who would trust in him. Substitution 
is what took our penalty on the cross and substitution is what brings us the blessing. Amen. We get put Jesus in Jesus and we get the blessing because we're in him. We're substituted into Christ. Does that make sense? We got the wrath of God came upon Jesus. I think that's good. It's good to be the substituted for that. And then we get the blessings that Jesus gets. We're joint heirs with him because of substitution as well. Will you completely trust Jesus today? Trust him no matter what you're facing. We need to trust the Lord. Our simple obedience does not involve our striving, our determination, or the work of our own hands in order to be holy in the sight of the Lord. Our simple obedience involves us just simply being obedient to position ourselves at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ, trusting in the work Jesus accomplished there for us as our substitute. God, my righteousness is as filthy rags, the Bible says. It's not pleasing. You don't even want to be near what I call righteousness. It's a stench in your nostrils. But if I put my faith in what your son did, his sinless life, his sacrifice upon the cross, it's a sacrifice that's well-pleasing. Amen? It's what God accepts. And that's what we have to put our faith in. Our obedience involves staying in Christ. Not just getting there at salvation. Amen? But staying there by way of the cross. That's a process of sanctification. Growing, maturing, becoming a little bit more like Jesus. Every day, staying in Christ. Because He is the one, the only one who has fulfilled the law. Our obedience involves us fighting to keep our faith exclusively in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I'm not going to trust my own efforts. I'm not going to trust the next fad or trend that's coming through the modern church. I'm going to trust Jesus. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame of holy lean on Jesus' name. Amen. Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking, is sinking sand. We need to not forget, never forget, that our righteousness comes through Jesus alone. Amen. It comes through Jesus alone. Listen to this story. The doctors keep claiming that if I follow the regimen of regular exercise, I will achieve the desired results of weight loss and physical fitness. Well, I've tried it, and like so many of you, I had no immediate experience of these promised benefits. In fact, over the first few weeks, I felt very weak and tired. The secret is perseverance. Over the long haul, exercise does produce better physical conditioning. The same principle applies to obedience. It is not always comfortable. God didn't ever say it was going to be comfortable. But over the long haul, the benefits are good. Amen? It has good results. We want instant gratification, don't we? But obedience doesn't always bring instant gratification. Sometimes our obedience means we have to miss out. We have to sacrifice on what some people in the world are indulging in. But it's for the sake of Christ. Walking that narrow way. And I heard a, a professor when I was in Bible college explain it like this. The way Jesus wants us to walk, it's like a funnel facing this way. It's narrow, like the narrow part of a funnel. But if we stay on that narrow path, what happens? Enter into the joy of my kingdom. You get the wide part of the funnel, right? He says, enjoy my kingdom. This is what's been prepared for you. But most people are living in the wide part of the funnel right now. Walking in the broad way, doing whatever they want, sowing their wild oats. And what's their destiny going to be? They're going to be on a narrow path of destruction, eternity and hell, completely separated from God and all His promises and all His blessings. And so while it may be difficult to walk the narrow way now, it's going to be worth it, isn't it? When Jesus says, enter into the joy of my kingdom. All that I have made is yours, amen? All that Jesus purchased at Calvary, it's yours. You can enjoy it. Streets of gold, walls of jasper, the crystal sea, the saints that have gone before, the very Shekinah presence of God. Uh, it's worth it. It's going to be worth it to have followed Jesus. So let's not forget the Lord's commandments. He just wants simple obedience. If we say we have faith, then that means we will walk in obedience. We can't do it in our own strength, but by the help of the Holy Spirit and by having our faith in Jesus, he can help us to obey God's commands. Number two, do not forget the Lord's blessings and promises fulfilled. We can see that in verses 7 through 10 of Deuteronomy chapter 8. In times of plenty, we often take credit for our prosperity 
and become proud that our own hard work and cleverness have made us rich. It is easy to get so busy collecting and managing wealth that we push God right out of our lives. But it is God who gives us everything that we have, and it is God who asks us to manage it for Him. Amen. We need to remember we're just stewards. We're just managers of the blessings that God has given us. Amen. And how, how much He has blessed us with. More than we deserve. Amen. To whom much is given, what does the Bible say? Much is required. And this nation is going to be judged tremendously for the blessings, the affluency that God has poured out upon the United States of America. The reason why God has blessed this nation it's not because of our ingenuity and our technology and our inventions. It's because the greatest export of this nation since its inception has been the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have, up until recent years, sent more missionaries to the foreign field to preach the gospel than any other nation. There are nations that are passing us now, and we ought to be concerned about that. But as long as we're proclaiming the gospel, God's going to bless us so that we can bless others. He's not blessing us so we can hoard it all to ourselves. He's blessing us so that we can fulfill the Great Commission, so that we can tell people about Jesus and Him crucified. Jesus alone is our source. Amen. It's not our paycheck. It's not the work of our own hands. It's Jesus. He's our source. James 1.17 reminds us. James 1.17, it says, Every good gift... And every perfect gift is from above, comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Aren't you thankful for that? He's a good God and He's always been good. Amen? He's always been good. He wants to bless us. He's not waiting with lightning bolts for every little mistake that we make, like Hollywood portrays Him. Amen? Like the world, like movies portray Him. He's a loving, compassionate, merciful God. And He wants to bless His people. He wants to be loved by His people. And if we'll just walk in simple obedience, every good gift, every perfect gift comes from Him. He's our source. 2 Peter 1.3 also tells us, as His divine power has given to us all things. Amen? Everything that we have. It's not because of us. It's not because of an inheritance we got from a human being. It's because Jesus is our source. He has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And I think those are the things that really matter. There are some things that may not really matter that we think, you know, are important things. But all things that pertain to life and godliness, what we need to, to live, God's provided for us through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. That's Jesus. Amen. It's His divine power. What He accomplished when He said it is finished is He gave us all things that we need for life and godliness. We need to remind ourselves of past blessings and promises of God that have been fulfilled, and then we need to testify about them to others. Maybe you're going through cancer and the Lord's healed you of cancer. Well, why did the Lord heal you of cancer? So that you could be healed and have a testimony yourself, but so that you could help others who are going through the same struggle. Why has the Lord provided for you miraculously in your finances in the past? So that you can have the assurance that He's your source, but tell other people that He's their source, amen, as well, and encourage them. So we need to do that. Like David, the shepherd, I've said before in other messages, had that staff. And as he sat there just fulfilling his daily responsibility, I don't think watching sheep was that exciting, do you? It's probably about like watching grass grow on some days. And uh, sheep are just pretty much stay together, I think. Every once in a while, one would get astray. That's why Jesus gave that illustration of leaving the 90 and 9 to go and get the one. But most of the time, shepherding is probably a pretty boring job. And David would sit there and fellowship with the Lord, worship the Lord. And he would carve into his staff remembrances of how the Lord had answered prayers or done something powerful. When he fought the lion with his bare hands and God gave him supernatural strength. He carved that into his staff. So every day as he ran his hand down that staff, he was remembering the Lord's faithfulness. Maybe it's a prayer journal that you keep. Maybe it's just a mental note or a, a, a list of things that you pray over every day. We need to remind ourselves of how God has blessed us. Don't forget the Lord your God. Not just for yourself, encouraging yourself in the Lord, but to encourage others. God is faithful. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If He did it back then, He's still good today. Amen? And He can do the same for others. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9. 
Deuteronomy 4, verse 9, it says, Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen. What has your eye seen in your lifetime? What part of the goodness of God has He allowed you to see? Think about that. Miracles, answers to prayer, uh, the moving of His Spirit in services that you've been a part of. Uh, God's presence so rich that you didn't even want to leave the room. Amen? You just had your feet in the river and you wanted to stay there. Remember those things. What have your eyes seen? Keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Amen? That sounds like a simple task. Just pass on to the next generations what God's done in your life. Think about the children of Israel. They've gone through the Red Sea, walked on dry ground, and they say, oh, well, it was only a couple feet deep. Well, it drowned the entire Egyptian army in a couple feet of water then. Either way, it's a miracle. I don't think it was a couple feet deep. I think it was the Red Sea. It was deep enough for it to go over their heads because they walked across on dry ground and the Egyptians followed them and not one of them survived. And they were drowned by God's uh, hand of judgment. And that's a picture of our deliverance from sin, from the bondage of sin, which is what Egypt represents it's a type of the world and God's brought us out where has he brought you to today we need to not forget his blessings what our eyes have seen what the Lord has worked in our lives it should encourage us every day and we should say God I want to go another step further amen and before you come back I want to go another step further I want to become a little bit more like you Jesus and I want to take as many people with me as I can and uh, God will help us to do that if we don't forget his blessings and His promises that have already been fulfilled in our lives. Number three, destruction and judgment will come for those who forget the Lord their God. And some would say, well, Pastor Rick, that's a negative message. Do we have to always have negative messages? Well, if you love somebody, you tell that kid, don't stick your hand up on the red hot burner on the stove. Not because you're worried about a negative message, right? Because you love them and you don't want them to burn their hand. We have loved ones who are in the process of dying without Jesus in their life. Why would we leave them there and not tell them? We're not trying to scare them into heaven. We're telling them the reality is judgment is coming. As sure and as certain as the wrath of God was poured out upon Jesus on the cross, and Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it got dark at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and the soldiers knew something was going on. They didn't understand it biblically, maybe, but they knew supernaturally something was going on. It was the wrath of God being poured out upon Jesus for the sin of mankind. As certain as that is, as certain as God rained fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah, and they've even found the ruins of some of these cities that were destroyed in the Old Testament, the ruins of Sodom and Gomorrah, which just happened to be by the Dead Sea, which is dead because of what? Salt. Um, it's no coincidence they found the ruins. As certain as that destruction is because of sin, there's destruction and judgment coming before everything is wrapped up. God is going to judge sin once and for all. And if we really love our friends, our loved ones, our family, we will tell them, you don't want to be an object of God's wrath. You don't have to be an object of God's wrath. He loves you and He went to the cross for you. And we need to tell people about that. Many people who label themselves Christian who may even go to church regularly, have honestly forgotten the Lord their God. There is no intimacy with God anymore. There's no spiritual growth. There's no passion. There's just religious motion that amounts to no more than dead works. And I think there's people all over this city that even go to church every week, but their Christian life is not loving God, loving other people. Like we said this morning, it's just works. It's just motion. It's just things that they do. Another thing that they do and God never intended for our relationship with Him to be dead, dry, religious motions. He wants us to have a live, a live uh, fresh, relevant relationship with Him. And that's growing every day. It's time to repent. It's time to get back to the cross. It's time to make Jesus the master over everything once again. If our lives have become dry spiritually, it's not God's fault. Amen? It's our fault. We need to say, God, forgive me. Forgive me for my unbelief. Forgive me for uh, my rebellion, my pride, thinking I can handle this on my own. God, I need you desperately every day. And God, I repent. I come back to the foot of the cross. 
I want you to be the master over everything in my life. God, I've taken control of too many things that I need to give back to you. Amen. And relinquish control of those things. Many families have forgotten the Lord their God. There's no more family altar. There's no more family devotions, Bible reading, or prayer. Used to be that every family had one of those big, giant, white family Bibles. You know, if you have those, <laughs> our family had one. Those are pa used to be passed down as family heirlooms. I think there's a lot of Bibles in people's homes in this city, and they're just collecting dust. The families aren't even gathering around and praying with each other as a family. And that's, uh, the family is under attack by the enemy. We need to be praying with our family members, having times of not just law, making a law out of it, but recognizing that God is the center of my family. We've got to have direction. Moms and dads and kids need to remember the Lord their God. He needs to be more important than family time, than sitcoms. Most of them are ridiculous anymore on TV. They're so anti-biblical, anti-scriptural. Uh, you can't even watch them anymore. But so much emphasis is placed even by churches in this community on family time. We've canceled Sunday night service because of family time. And uh, that's not time with the Lord. I'm sorry, you can justify that all you want. Staying home from church and watching TV or going to the movies is what's really going on. And families need to be in God's presence more, not less, as we see the Lord's return getting close. We've got to realize there's destruction, there's judgment. This isn't tiddlywinks, this isn't a game. People are going to lose their lives for eternity and be in a place of eternal torment and punishment if they don't hear the message. And if we cut the amount of opportunities in half, at a church for them to hear the gospel message. And that church is not the only place, I know, that they hear the message. We need to be the church wherever we go. But if there's not an opportunity, a lot of people still know this is a safe place where they can come and find out about Jesus. And if we've cut those opportunities in half, I think we've done a disgrace to the work of God. And we need to position ourselves in God's presence, have a family altar, have a time where we're praying together, reading the Bible together. Too many churches have forgotten the Lord their God. They've substituted the presence of the Lord that they've lost with programs, with activities, with smoke, with lights, technology, and psychology. Churches even hiring a whole staff of counselors instead of looking to the Word of God. And uh, psychology and the Bible are antithetical. They, their, their main premise of psychology is that man is basically good and it just has to be drawn out of him. The premise of the Bible is that man is sinful and needs a savior. So which way are you going to go? You can't go both ways. And that's even Pentecostal churches right here in our own city. We've got to wake up. Our churches need to repent. Churches are not meant to be for entertainment or to be run as a business. Yet most of them, that's how they operate in both of those ways. They're supposed to be sanctuaries for the manifest presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not supposed to be living rooms where you can kick your shoes off and drink some coffee. They're supposed to be a place of sanctuary where we're reverencing the presence of the Lord. We're recognizing God wants to meet with us. And we need to get back to that again. Our community and nation has by and large forgotten the Lord their God. Although much of our currency still has in God we trust printed on it. We learned last Wednesday night in the study on the Masons, it also has all kinds of Mason symbols on it, <laughs> which are, are uh, you know, totally opposite of in God we trust. Although we have a church on just about every corner, Jesus is no longer the master over everything in our country. He used to be in our communities and nations, the master over everything, but other things have replaced him. We have other gods our heroes that we pay millions and billions of dollars to our movie stars and professional athletes who have the most corrupt lives of anyone and who have no respect for the things they ought to. And uh, we, we need to analyze who our heroes are, who our role models are. Prayer is not allowed in public places. They saw Red Cross, I don't know if you saw the story, police officer at the River Center in Baton Rouge was asked by one of the people coming in, can you pray with me? about a need I have in my life. And the officer said, yes, I will. He started to pray for him, and the government workers who are part of the Red Cross told him they had to go outside. The Red Cross, but they can't pray with someone about a need in their life. They had to go outside because they're not, uh, they don't want to be um, associated with a religious affiliation. 
And the police officer obliged and went outside, but he still prayed for him right outside the door. But we better wake up, folks. We're not allowed to pray in public places like our schools or our government buildings until there's a tragedy like the flood. And even then, uh, there's still uh, political correctness going on. The destructive fires that are going on in Cajon Pass, California, San Bernardino area. There's lots of lives, lots of homes being destroyed there. Destruction and judgment are pending over our community and nation if we don't get back on our knees. If we don't get back to the foot of the cross and cry out for God's mercy, for God's kindness, and for God's forgiveness. And people, and I don't believe that the flood in Louisiana was necessarily God's judgment. I think things just happen. And I don't think the fires in California were necessarily God's judgment. I don't know that there's facts to back that up. But that shows us how fragile life is. Amen? Life can be snuffed out like that. And we need to be ready. We need to have our hearts right. I remember a story when we were pastoring in Titusville, Florida. There was this girl that was, I think, in her early 20s. And she was a runner. And they had a newspaper article, a news article about it. And she had run every morning for most of her life, very avid runner. And she went out and was just out on her morning run. And out of nowhere, a tree branch fell off one of the trees. And she just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it killed her. Healthy, everything going for her in her life. And her life was snuffed out. And I tell you what, we never know uh, when, when it's our time to go. And that's why it's so crucial that we tell our loved ones, that we tell our friends, destruction and judgment is going to come if we forget the Lord our God. We need to turn to Him while there's still time. Amen? Not play games with God and say, oh, well, I'm going to live the way I want to. And when I'm on my deathbed, then I'll cry out to God. You may not have that opportunity. And we better make sure that we're right. We better make sure. I've had several uh, people that are affiliated with this church that go to this church. They have loved ones right now who are on their deathbed. And they're not sure whether they're saved. One of them has dementia. And they're not sure whether... Their mind is right. And you know what? We still pray in faith. Say the sinner's prayer with them. Amen? Just like people who are in a coma can often hear you and things are registering even though they cannot speak. You pray the sinner's prayer with them anyway. And you believe the Lord. You leave it in the Lord's hands. You do everything you can. Amen? And leave it in the Lord's hands. There's other loved ones who are so have had such destruction in their life because of drugs, because of adverse circumstances in their life that we're not sure now that they're at the end of their life whether they're ready. It's time to come to the Lord now. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. When we're in our right mind, when we have the ability to make that choice with all of our faculties, and we need to recognize that for our friends and loved ones and not play games, but tell them about Jesus. Don't forget the Lord your God, but remember His commandments. Walk in simple obedience. Remember His blessings and His promises that He's already fulfilled in your life. But also remember, destruction and judgment are coming if our community, if our families, if our nation doesn't turn back to the Lord, there's going to be judgment. Would you stand with me tonight? <clears throat> Maybe you're listening to this message and you need to surrender your life completely to Jesus Christ. You would say, Pastor Eric, I don't know that I'm fully yielded to Jesus. You know, all you have to do, Romans 10, 9 and 10, Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead. And you can be saved. It's not magic words. It's just saying, Jesus, I believe what you did on the cross is for me. And I need your forgiveness. I don't want sin to dominate my life anymore. Jesus, I want you to be in control. And if that's where you need to make a decision for Christ tonight, I encourage you to do that as we close this service out in prayer. Just say those simple words. You can talk to God like you talk to your friends with reverence and say, God, I need your help. Uh, Brother Larson shared when he was here, sometimes the most theological prayer we can pray is, Lord, help. <laughs> Lord, help. And if you're lost in sin, you need the Lord's help. And He can forgive you. He can give you a fresh start. As believers, I want us um, to, to spend some time tonight as we sing a couple songs. Let's position ourselves in worship and a place of altar, time, prayer, decision, prayer. Let's ask the Lord to help us to not forget. Amen. But to remember His commandments. God, what are you requiring of me? And sometimes He's bringing us into deeper waters, right? 
to greater sacrifice, greater consecration, and it's never comfortable. But God, what are you wanting me to walk into? Your commandments, what you require of me. And Lord, help me to walk in simple obedience. Give me the strength, the help of your Holy Spirit to mature, amen, to grow. So let's do that tonight. Let's position ourselves, ask the Lord to help us not to forget, but to remember that all the blessings and promises we have in this life, they come from Him. Amen? It's not because of our efforts or because of anything we have done or man has done, but it's because of His finished work. Let's thank Him for that. Let's remember the Lord as our source, and let's remember to point others to that source through our testimony and those blessings and those promises that we've seen fulfilled. And let's remember that we need His presence in our personal lives. We need His Lordship over our families. Amen? We need His power and His manifest presence to be in the churches in Colorado Springs. Amen? No more play in church. No more entertainment. Running things like a business. We need the manifest presence of Jesus in the church. We need His glory to even shine down on our community and nation once again. One more revival. God, do it one more time. And so as we sing these songs, let's, let's uh, make that our prayer tonight. Ask the Lord to work in your family, your loved ones, your own life. And let's let him uh, do the work that he wants to do. Sing that song, You Are My King, and I worship Him tonight. Respond to the Lord. No. 
that need to be corrected, the problems that need to be fixed. Lord, if we're wise, we won't ignore the things that you've shown us tonight that need to change in our own lives. But Lord, we'll allow your Holy Spirit to, to shape us, to mold us, to correct those problems in our own life. God, I pray that that happens. I pray that we'll not forget, Lord Jesus, your commandments, what you require of us as your people. Help us to walk in simple obedience. God, we can't do it in our own strength. We need your help. We need the help of your Holy Spirit. But God, let us see how crucial it is that we walk in simple obedience. Help us to not forget, but to remember, Lord, your blessings and your promises. You're the source of every good thing, of every perfect gift that we have in our life. It was purchased for us at Calvary. And help us to remember that and to share that with others. God, that there's blessings, there's answers to prayer, there's breakthrough for our co-workers, for our neighbors, for our family and friends. Let us testify of your goodness to the people that you bring across our path this week. God, we pray that you'll pour out your, your manifest presence in our personal lives, in our families. God, that your manifest presence would return to the churches of Colorado Springs that the churches in Colorado Springs, the leadership and the congregations would be going by way of the cross. Lord, that your Holy Spirit would replace the programs, the smoke and the lights. God, that there would be people being saved, hearts being touched, lives being delivered once again in these last days. We need your glory to shine down upon our community and nation. Bring a revival, God. Bring a turning of hearts back to you uh, by your Holy Spirit and let us be a part of that last day's effort, that last day's harvest. We thank you. Lord, I pray that you'll see each need that people are carrying tonight. Lord, that you'll lift those heavy burdens, bring answers, bring breakthrough. God, use us as instruments in your hand this week, tools that you can use for your glory and for your kingdom. God, help us to get out of the way, to represent you well. God, we just believe in you for a good week. Thank you. Bless us as we leave this place tonight. Keep us close to you throughout the week, we pray. We'll give you the praise for all that's done in Jesus' name.